Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks out there. Welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, meteorologist D.T. from WeatherRisk.com, the Colonel of Confusion, the Captain of Catastrophe, the Commander of Chaos. And it's time to talk about weather. It's 8 p.m. here in the East. All teenagers in high school should be banned forever, especially when they're bothering me. Let's talk about weather and get this show back on the road where it should be. Lots of talk about this particular episode, or this particular edition. So we have a current event, and then, of course, something coming down the road here. We'll talk about the short term, or where th- or this current event, which is unfolding now. And then we'll talk about where is spring, any sign of it, and I don't see it at all, and neither does anybody else for that matter. We'll talk about the extreme blocking pattern. The MJO favors another East Coast winter storm, potentially, and also the event for March 24th, 25th. So let's get right to it. All right, this first image here, this is a surface map uh, at, uh, at the APM uh, 0Z and uh, up for the Mid-Atlantic region. And uh, as you can see, that uh, we can take a look at our temperatures and our dew points and see exactly what's going on here. Notice, like, for example, let me... Uh, uh, highlight my pen here so we can see this uh, a little better. Notice in central Pennsylvania we have a dew points of a temperature 33 dew point 15. Harrisburg is 36 uh, 20. So that means once it saturates uh, you'll probably drop below freezing and you'll it's definitely look like a it looks like a pretty good snow uh, service observation right there. Of course the winds are now the north in many areas in New England. It's all the northwest. The dew points look at Bradley and, and uh, Worcester. The dew points in the single digits quite low there. Uh, New York City, the dew points are in the teens. That's pretty good for those guys. And then in D.C., uh, the winds are now easterly a little bit. They swung around. But to the northwest in D.C., it, look, Winchester is uh, uh, 36, 28, uh, Martinsburg 39, 22. Those are pretty good, uh, you know, temperatures for snow as the uh, cold air continues to build in. Now the rain's coming in, of course, from this general direction coming up, but the main event comes in later on tonight uh, with this next round of precipitation. So a lot of this area in here it looks like it's pretty set for some snow, but. Um, most of it, it is going to change over, even in the Shenandoah Valley areas. And the issue is how far north does it change? I don't think it's going to change much past here, but we'll see. Uh, our next slide here, this is the service map from, I guess this is from the uh, 12Z NAM. And we can see the, uh, you know, the thick blue line here. This is the rain snow line. So we can see... Um, uh, the, you know, the, there it is moving through central Pennsylvania. This is uh, by tomorrow evening. And look at the southeast winds here. See those southeast winds bring in the warm air. So this blue line would probably go through Boston or very close to it. And uh, the next slide here, our next map, this is uh, the uh, high-resolution NAM. This is tomorrow morning. And we can see, uh, again, this is the uh, thick blue line is the rain snow line here. So you can see the wedge. See how the wedge goes all the way down this way? So all this precipitation here, it looks like it's snow in the Shenandoah Valley and in southwestern Pennsylvania. But it's not going to last as warm air is coming in here and the warm air is coming in here. So, um, again, it doesn't look like it's going to be a huge event, but it's March. You know, any snow you get in March, even in the mountains in Virginia is and, and Maryland, can be pretty significant. This is the GFS doing the same sort of thing. I mean, we are going to see a triple point, a new low form right in here, this area right here. As you can see, we are going to get a big low form in here, but the problem is that the warm air is already coming in, and that blue line is coming to the north. So now if this, if this uh, triple point had formed down in here, that would be a different issue. A lot of the uh, interior northeast would stay all snow, but that's not what's happening. Now, this is the uh, European from uh, midday here showing the total snowfall. And notice that the European actually doesn't have that much snow in Boston. It has all the snow just inland. And uh, very significant snow, of course, as you go inland. New York City gets nothing. But, you know, White Plains gets about five or six inches. Canal- Coastal Connecticut doesn't get anything. But Northwest Connecticut gets hammered with a lot of snow and so on and so forth. Central Pennsylvania does a little bit in the Shenandoah Valley, but not much. And not much in here at all, if, if anything. Uh, Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Philadelphia ends up getting screwed on the European again. And that's been the case for them, but those guys all winter long. Now, this is the GFS. It has a bit more snow towards the Washington, D.C. As you can see, a little more snow down right here. here see that. And getting close to Philly and getting close to New York City, right along coastal Connecticut. So there's a difference there. You know, do you forecast no snow at all for coastal Connecticut? Given how what the temperature profiles are, it looks to me like... Connecticut's going to see snow, even the coastal areas, even New York City at the start, but it will go over. A lot of snow in Shenandoah Valley here and uh, eastern West Virginia, up to, you know, six, seven, eight inches of snow, very possible, and a good amount of snow up in that area. So that's a pretty reasonable forecast, I think. I don't have a problem with that. And this is the WRF. 
We can see here it's got a lot of snow in Pennsylvania and north, central of New York State into interior New England. Not much. Very, very rapid drop-off. Right along here, look at, look at this drop-off in New York City. Very sharp drop-off. Long Island gets a couple of inches. Coastal Connecticut gets three or four. But look at this again. Right in here. Total rip-off in Philly, Boston, and Philly, uh, Baltimore, and Washington, D.C. Mm -mm, mm -mm. What do they have to do to get snow? And then um, right up in here, a lot of snow here in the Shenandoah Valley as well. So... All right, let's take a look at some other conditions. Now, here's let's take a look at the teleconnections here. This is the uh, uh, Arctic Oscillation, and this thing is just tanked. I mean, my God, this is historic. This is extreme in here, folks. This is just off the charts. And that is significant because when you see extreme events in the atmosphere, teleconnections, it means extreme events might be happening on the surface. This thing is so far off, it's tanked. It begins to come up a little bit by uh, March 24th, but look how extreme this is. The GFS, the European, they all tanked this baby way down in here. Very impressive. If we look at the other teleconnections, this is the... Uh, NAO, generally very strong, persistently negative, uh, right through till uh, the end of the month, even on the European ensembles, very strong here as well. This is the western-based NAO, if we look at it from the, from the western point of view, and you can see again that it, this baby is just tanked way down in here. Look at this, 500, whew, my God, you know, that's just 500 meters above uh, abnormal. It's just way off the scale here. Uh, you know, negative, of course, being a positive height anomaly. But you can see how extreme it is. It's just off the charts. This is just amazing stuff. And then this is the PNA, which is uh, not really relevant to our upcoming situation here. It's, it goes negative, and then it goes neutral later on as we go towards it. Now, let's take a look at what this is going on here. What's happening is, now this is a complicated looking map for many of you, but let's just look at the colors. The colors here, okay, show how extreme the pattern is. You see how you see the red here? Look at this. See how that matches? 360 meters above normal. This is, represents a monster block. There's our negative NEO. This is our 50-50 low in here over southeastern Canada, and this here is a deep trough. And now what's happening is this energy is coming down this way, and it's moving off the East Coast, and it's going boom, and it's making the big storm. At least that's what some of the models are showing. But, you know, this is a long way out. This is, is this really true? I mean, it's March. Can this really happen? Well, let's take a look. This is the uh, ensemble's 192 hours. This is from the NCEP folks. And, again, it's a little cleaner, but we can see the same sort of concept as what we saw here. It's the same sort of thing. Look at the block. Right up in here, you see the block, Right? In northern in, in Canada, here's the uh, here's the big 50/50 low, and there's the big storm moving off potentially over Virginia, North Carolina. That's what the model. Is, this is an ensemble, and uh, you know this is what the GFS show from early Sunday morning. Here's the storm. It bombs off the coast, and look at this. Yes, that's 20 to 25 inches of snow over Dimwoody and Nottoway, and 17 inches in Richmond. I mean, this is a historic snowstorm for Virginia. But it's the GFS. Now, what you should do, folks, is save this image. And when you get bored in the spring and the summer months when it warms up and you want some weather porn, save this image because that's what it is. This is weather porn. It's extreme. And look, I love, to, I love that to be the case, but come on. The, you know, you can get a big snowstorm in Virginia and not have 22 inches of snow. That's just nuts. So, any event. But on the other hand, here's the European from this morning. And the European is showing the same sort of thing. Um, we can clearly see that the European uh, has the block up in here. Here's our 50-50 low, and there's the trough coming in this way, and it moves through and it go, explodes off the coast. You know, very consistent pattern here. And this is the European from this morning. The European showed the same sort of thing. Now, the European does it at day 10, okay? So this is really, um, uh, let me do it here. Oops, back again. This is 325. Okay, and back here, as we go further back in, in here, this is, uh, you know, this is uh, for the uh, 24th in here. This is actually valid um, 324. So it's a little difference in the timing. So the models are trying to figure out which, uh, which piece of energy in the southern stream is going to go boom. But that's what really what they're debating over. The European has a little later than the GFS. But again, look at this. It develops a mo nice storm here. You can see it very nicely. Right in here, and then it bombs off the Virginia, North Carolina coast. There it is, intermediate from Storm Vista. You can see developing. And look at that huge amount of snow. That's 12 to 18 inches of snow over Richmond into North Carolina. Now, I don't think that's correct. It's overdone, but I'm just trying to get you to understand that there's a potential for an event coming down the road here. 
Okay, they would not take this literally, but something big may be coming down the road. Now, this is the European ensembles, and again, the European ensembles are doing what the GFS is showing. Huge block up in here, 50-50 low in here. This energy has to go underneath it, and it hits North Carolina, Virginia, and that area. That's what it's doing. So that's what it's trying to show. Now, has this happened before? Well, there is an event which shows that it did happen before. In, um, uh, let me call it up again so you can see it here. In uh, 325, 1971, okay? That was the event. You can see the date up in here. See it? March 25th, 1971. Look, there's a block. There's a 50-50 low right here. Here's a block. There's the energy in the southern stream. It slides underneath it. Look familiar? Well, it should. And that's what. And then we saw this. The energy exploded off the coast, um, slid straight off the coast. There's our 50-50 low here. You can see it. There's our blocking feature right there, negative NEO. It's, and this, 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 this feature is going off the coast. What sort of snow did that make? Oh, you don't want to know. There you go. Look at that. This is March 26, 27, 1971. Yeah, okay. So it can happen before. That's 12 plus inches of snow southwest of Richmond. There's Richmond. Okay, and over here is where is Lynchburg is uh, out in this area here. And Roanoke even out here. D.C., nothing. Okay, and a decent snow. But look at this, 12 inches in these areas here. Very impressive looking system, to say the least. Now, the MJO is actually favoring the situation. Now, uh, what I wanted to point out here on the MJO is, if we look at this, this is from February 5th. Remember? February 5th, that's when the New England blizzard was. You remember that, February 8th and 9th? This is where it is. It was in Phase 1. Where's the MJO going to be like next week? Phase 8 and Phase 1. Uh-oh. All right? That's, just all I'm, that's all I'm saying at this point, just uh-oh. Uh, here is the uh, European, it takes it through phase 8 and phase 1, then kills it. This is the European weeklies, takes it into phase 8 and phase 1, and then towards the circle of death. Here is the GFS, phase 8 and phase 1, all next week when the system's coming down the pike. Now this is the afternoon, 12Z, GFS and European. Both of these models have the system now further off the coast, less of a threat. You see, it takes it here. Right, moves out this way. Here's the European, goes out this way. This would still be a snow threat for North Carolina, Virginia, but and but the models are essentially the same. Both have the block. You can see the blocking feature right here. Right there, see it. Both models have the 50/50 low right here. Both models have this piece of energy right in here, which causes the storm to happen. So we'll see. It may form off the coast. It's absolutely, and you know that might still count as a hit in terms of the models figuring out what's going to happen. So. And this is the 12Z GFS ensemble. Now, what's interesting about this is that uh, normally with an ensemble, you get a pretty good spread. These are the 21 members of the GFS, actually 20 members plus the operational run. Look at this. Let me point this out to you. Huge storm, huge storm, huge storm, uh, significant storm, no miss. Huge storm off the coast, uh, bombs away. Yes, big storm. This one becomes one 24 hours later. Monster storm, monster storm, monster storm, monster storm, monster storm, monster storm, and monster storm. Now, it's the GFS. I realize that, but, you know, that's a pretty strong signal this far out. It's something to watch, only because the pattern has become so extreme, not because it's the GFS. Okay? Let's make sure we understand that. All right. Here's the European ensemble taking the low off the coast. It has something. Not, not the same extreme as the GFS, but it's got something. And in summary, what I want to point out here is, and let's go over this carefully. Um, let me I change my colors here so we can see this. Here we go. All right. Major snowstorm is for Virginia is unlikely. But then again, so is Sandy and so is Katrina. Remember, with extreme events, if you always go with what's probably going to happen, you're never going to get an extreme event. All extreme events, by definition, are unlikely. Whether it's the Dershio or Sandy or Katrina, or the two snowstorms four days apart three winters ago in the Washington, D.C., Baltimore area, or the severe heat wave that had in Russia three summers ago. All extreme weather events, by definition, are unlikely. Most of the time, day 8, day 9, day 10 models are crap. Just BS, Bravo Sierra. But when the overall pattern is extreme, then the unlikely event is far more likely to occur. I'm not committing to this. I'm just letting you know it's a possibility because the pattern is so extreme. This is Meteorologist DT from WeatherWrist.com. Let's see what happens.